Kogi State is moving forward. Our people are enjoying the true dividends of democracy. Conference states today, showing on TVC News at this time. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with breaking news. Welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's edition of the program, we'll be focusing on the care economy and the workers in that sector. We also have new stories for you. We will be right back. Gathered here are cream of the crop in Nigeria's civil service, including the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the Head of Service of the Federation, Permanent Secretaries, Directors and Senior Civil Servants. They are here at a summit on developing strategies and plan for retirement. The theme of the program is challenges, strategies, prospects and opportunities at the retirement in Nigeria. As we embark on this journey, we call on all public and corporate organizations to partner with us in shaping the future of pre-retirement in Nigeria. Let us work together to create a robust and inclusive ecosystem that fosters prosperity for all. The head of service of the Federation, who was represented by the Permanent Secretary of the Service, Comfort Adyoshu, disclosed that the head of service has already developed a concept of retirement in collaboration with the Public Service Institute of Nigeria and Bank of Agriculture at a very good time that policies will be examined, challenged, scrutinized, and perceptions are estrayed with a few of preferring solutions that we ensure healthy and energetic living standards for retirees and also looking forward to providing platforms that will further sensitize and also empower retirees to optimize the second stage of their life. The national president of Nigeria Labour Congress, Joe Ajiro, criticized government handling of pensions and welfare of retirees. Pensions are meant to offer security and peace of mind, ensuring that retirees can enjoy their golden years without financial stress in good health. However, the reality for many of us is starkly different. It is worrying that most retired members encounter not just health challenges, but many, other leading, many others leading to untimely deaths. There are hopes that the decision reached and resolution passed here will help form policies and legislation that will direct target the welfare of retired civil servants. The inauguration of the Forum of the Global Coalition for Social Justice is structured as a continuation of the ongoing collaborative efforts initiated by partners on a thematic development. It will also promote the need to build resilience of societies, improve the coherence between economic and social policies, and foster social dialogue for shared prosperity. At the conference, presidents of Nepal and Brazil made presentations on the changing world of work and the need for nations to comply. We need greater adaptability and innovative work styles. We need to make assessments of the institutional, legal and operational aspects of the ILO and reform so as to address the challenges of the changing. However, one core value remains unchanged. That is, our collective effort to achieve sustainable peace through social justice. Never social justice or social fairness was so crucial for humanity. It is very important to reclaim the spirit of the Philadelphia Declaration that was adopted 80 years ago. In that declaration, we enshrined in it that work should not be treated as a merchandise but as, as a source of dignity. The welfare of each one depends on the welfare of all.
As Pope Francis said, there's no democracy with hunger, neither development with poverty, and neither justice in it, within inequality. So that's why I accepted the invitation of the Director General, Joubert Mbou, to co-chair the Global Coalition for Social Justice. It will be instrumental for us to implement the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The SDGs to, on Decent Work for All is not moving forward in the speed and scale that are necessary for to meet its indicators. It was concluded during the event that is of utmost importance for countries to collaborate towards achieving social justice. I was privileged to, you know, serve in the committee on care economy, and there we look at the issues surrounding the workers in the care economy. Who are the workers in the care economy? Like the workers that take care of uh, people at the care homes, uh, the nurses, the maids, uh, the hoteliers, those who work in the hotels and much more. Those are in the care economy. What uh, 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 issues, the um, difficulties that they have faced while doing their work. Um, most of the care economy workers, they are migrant workers, and we know what uh, the migrant workers, most of them, the issues affecting the migrant workers uh, in that sector. So we try to look at and to examine all the issues burdening about the care economy and uh, how we can provide solutions to all those uh, issues that were, you know, identified and raised. So that is the area in which uh, we critically look at uh, those in the care economy sector. Even the projection by ILO that in 2024 uh, the, that there's going to be an increase of 5.2 uh, million uh, jobs, but today I think uh, uh, we are looking at 4.9. That means that there's a minim, going to be a minimal decrease, you know, in terms of job creation in, uh, in, in, in 2024. So when you look at this and also look at the protection, uh, social uh, uh, security, which, you know, is also very fundamental. And also look at that. And I'm happy to see, uh, a, you know, a committee on biological assets. So in a totality, these are what we look at in fundamental principle and right of work. Unions and employers coming together to look for best ways to ensure that the world of work becomes more, you know, more convenient, conducive and also productive for everybody. We have the view that what should be at the table right now for our leaders is they've come here, they've seen these standards, They've seen international best practices. We are not in short of laws. I think the greatest challenge we have back home is just the issue of implementation. Let's comply with all these standards. If, to some extent, we comply with some of the standards and conventions we've seen here, to a reasonable extent, to have a fair, you know, industrial relation climate back in Nigeria. A lot of anti-labor practices where some labor leaders are being uh, uh, maltreated, uh, uh, labor leaders are being retagged, and all that then. Even where you have um, um, a situation where government or even employers fail to provide decent work environment for workers, that also is um, ongoing. And as we speak, that committee is looking at all the issues around decent work and how employers are able to provide uh, decent work such that workers will be able to uh, work in line with improved productivity within this space where they work, whether in the private sector, in the uh, uh, public sector, or even in the informal sector. Decent work means uh, doing the right thing in the working environment to improve the welfare of workers. So it is things like uh, uh, maybe conducive working environment in terms of tools, the facilities like recreational facilities, uh, maybe fair pay, so what the ILO is working on is working on so that things, these things will be improved upon, such as, uh, and it's related to Convention 121 and Convention 155 of the ILO Convention, which deals with uh, 
uh, injuries at work and other isolated activities. So for this year, we are doing some amendments to align with the realities of what is happening currently. That's what we have come to do for this year. My take home is that whatever happens globally, Nigeria is not an exception. So it's expected that whatever comes out of it, Nigeria will also practice, practice it or adopt it for the good of the workers and the economy in general, because whatever affects workers affects the economy, because these workers that produce, they are the producers of wealth. So if they, are, if they abide by all those things, I think the economy will improve, as well as the welfare of workers and Nigerians in general. On the Profile Interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the National President of the Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria. It brings us up to speed on how the world of work is concerned about workers in the care economy. He was a member of that committee and it brings us more information on this development. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. It's another ILO program and you served under the Decent Work and Care Economy Committee. Can you bring us up to speed on uh, what ILO's position is for the care economy? Well, as uh, you are aware, this is the 112th session of the ILO. And uh, I was opportunity to be part of the discussion. And as you said, I am under the Decent Work and uh, Care Economy. And uh, this committee is a committee that is set up by the ILO in this discussion to look at the issue of domestic workers and migrants mm. because uh, this category of workers are the kind of workers that are under the informal sector, that are under the informal sector. And unfortunately, there is no any uh, uh, policies that will take care of this kind of category of workers. Uh, especially the children, the migrant workers, the freedom mothers, and so on. So the ILO is trying to bring about policies to set up a standard that will take care of this kind of category of workers, especially in the informal sector. So these are some of the discussions that are taking place in the committee session. And there will be a recommendation in that is for effect. Still talking about the care economy, if I'm going to domesticate it, back at home. We know that um, there is the minimum wage um, um, discussion going on, even though we're expecting the presidency to come up with a figure. Um, there is still that concern that people that are in the care economy do not even receive what the uh, minimum wage would be. And there's also that concern about those that are in the care economy also not being able to join uh, any union. Um, as a labor leader, how would you respond to this? Well, first and foremost, uh, let me say that as part of the discussion during the minimum wage uh, committee, uh, this issue was brought about in Nigeria, uh, especially to the fact that we were made to understand that uh, the exclusion for the national minimum wage is about 20 workers uh, below. So we decided to said that from our own part, the organized uh, labor, that that number should be reduced at least five, so that uh, the, that kind of category of workers will also be taken care of. Because as at now, if the workers in any organization are not up to 20, they are not entitled to national minimum wage. So I think uh, this is an effort by the organized labor to ensure that. And uh, the issue of unionization, especially in the informal sector, it's very important also because it is only through the union that such kind of issues will be discussed and deliberated and find a lasting solution to it. So even at the minimum wage discussion, we were able to bring about these issues and it's part of our recommendation to the government. My question now is, what is your comment to state governors that do not implement and the minimum wage because right now we have some state governors that have not that have not even implemented the previous 30,000 naira which was the minimum wage what more is labor doing to engage um, not just federal government or state governors well it's very sad actually because even during the negotiation uh, there was a lot of issues that comes up we have to stand on our feet that the committee is a tripartite committee 
uh, ranging from government, from organized private sector, and organized, uh, and then the government, organized private sector, and then labor. Uh, so I think uh, it's not good uh, that the governors are not respecting the rule of law. Uh, once the minimum wage was passed, because it's a national issue, it has to be respected by the whole the three tiers of government. So what we do in this time around is that there is a committee on enforcement, and that committee has made their recommendation to ensure that once the new national minimum wage was, uh, wage was passed into law, that all the state governors, all the local government should also implement as it was legislated. So I think this is very important. And you can see that some of the governors have even started to pay above the minimum wage. And it was in practice in the country. So I think, and I'm appealing that the state governors should put the payment of salary as a priority because the workers are those who are producing the wealth of the nation. So they should also be considered. And especially this time around when the living condition uh, is very tough. So I think uh, the governors need to respect the rule of the law. So you are the president of Medical Health Workers Union and also all the position at the African level. Generally, what would you say is the greatest challenge Africa is faced with when it comes to um, healthcare workers or even caregivers? Well, we just held the West African Health Sector Union Network uh, meeting which was hosted in Nigeria. And uh, part of those who attended, I think, are about 12 countries, African countries. And uh, we discussed extensively. And the most important issue that was going around almost all the count member countries is the issue of not uh, having a enough budgetary allocation to the health. There was a declaration in Abuja uh, that 15% of the total budget of each country should be allocated to health. But I think only one or two countries respect that. So during our meeting, we call on the, all the member countries to respect that provision by allocating at least 15% of the total budgetary allocation uh, of the budget to health sector. I will continue to advocate for that. And uh, during that session, we were able to identify a lot of challenges concerning the health workers in our respective countries. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, bring out our community and will continue to follow out our recommendation to ensure that all the member countries benefited from that discussion. Okay, finally, talking about casualization and outsourcing of workers, um, what will be your take on it? Um, with also the fact that there is a brain drain in the healthcare sector and there's a need for more people to be injected into the system. Yes, uh, we were very opportune uh, to find out that uh, in our country, particularly in Nigeria, that there was a waiver uh, for the employment of more health workers to take care of the brain drain and migration of health workers. And uh, we were able to have a visit to the Honorable Minister of Health under the Joint Health Sector Union, Johesu, and uh, we urged the ministry to use that opportunity very wisely, especially mm -hmm. on all professions in the health sector, so that a lot of people will be injected into the system to take care of the migration of health workers. Because if I tell you the number of health workers, the medical doctors, the nurses, other health workers that are leaving the country month by month, you will be surprised. And the kind of stress that the health workers are receiving in treatment of uh, our declines because of lack of manpower. So I think the Nigeria, uh, the health ministry, is very important that they, are, they should take this issue as a priority to ensure that uh, there is enough manpower to take care of our citizens. Our citizens. Uh, especially due to the fact that the uh, welfare of workers especially the health workers, should be improved. Because this is the reason why the health workers are leaving the country, what they call Japa syndrome. So I think it's very important in that direction. And the union, or all the unions under the health, uh, joint health sector union, will do their best to collaborate with government or all other relevant uh, stakeholders to ensure that that Japa syndrome has come to an end. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Jasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.